Welcome back all my type ones, type one and a halfs, twos, Matis, Latas, whatever you want to call yourself. I'm Ben, I'm a paramedic firefighter and a diabetic. Today I'm doing the Omnipod 5 setup video. And if content like this specific for diabetics is important to you, make sure you subscribe and I will do my best to keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of diabetes. Let's get into it. Well, congratulations on setting up the Omnipod 5. Now, there's really only one thing left and that's to put the device on. In order to do so, you're really only gonna need a couple things, five to be exact. First of all, you'll need some type of alcohol swab. You'll need your controller or PDM device or cell phone. You'll need your Omnipod 5, an approved insulin, and your Pod Pal if you got one in the package. So go ahead and hit the setup new pod button. It's gonna ask you to fill the new pod with up to 100 units of insulin and listen for two beeps. And after that, you'll tap next. So what you'll do is you'll open up this package. There's a little tearaway corner here. And in this package, you'll find your Omnipod 5 and a syringe and needle. So what you'll do is you connect these two pieces here. You'll use your alcohol swab at this time. Using the aseptic technique, you just go ahead and clean up the top of the alcohol. Then you'll take your needle and you'll draw back however much you think you're gonna need. So for me, I use the minimum, which is this dark line here. And I draw back just past it, right there. Then you grab your insulin, put your needle in, push your air forward. That'll create some bubbles inside of the medication vial. Draw back the amount desired. I always draw back a little bit further because there is gonna be air bubbles. They're gonna to wanna to contract, so flick out those bubbles, push them out. And there you go. You got your medication. So next, you're gonna find this porthole right there where the arrow is. You're gonna put your needle right inside of it. And you're gonna push the medication in. It should go in smoothly. If not, then perhaps it, you didn't put the needle in the right place. Once it's all the way in, you'll hear two beeps. Take the needle back out. Make sure you put the top on top of the needle, this plastic top. Best way to do it is not to jam it forward uh, but actually just take it at an angle and then guide it forward. And then this can be thrown in your biohazard trash. So once we've heard the two beeps, then we're gonna go ahead and push next. It's now communicating with the pod. It's best to keep the pod right next to it in a flat surface. As it starts to communicate with the pod, you're gonna hear a clicking noise, like a tick-tock, almost like a clock. Some people have called it uh, the alligator from Peter Pan. Kinda sounds like that. So this tick-tock noise is actually a priming. It's very important. And what it's doing is it's taking out the excess bubbles. And even though we extracted air out of that syringe, um, it, there's still a little bit of air that gets into the system. So what happens is as it's priming, it's pushing that 
the rest of that air back out. And so it's good to keep it flat and not to touch it while it's doing this process. All right, so it looks like it's ready. So what I'm gonna do now is just clean the site uh, where I'm gonna put it. And so I'll take this alcohol swab, I'll take the rest of the portion that hasn't been used, find the spot on the arm, clean it. Best way to clean it is start in the middle and work your way in a circle outward and never go back towards the circle if you wanna make it feel clean. I'm gonna record the pod site now. So since I put it on the back of my arm, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to back and left arm, done. We're gonna remove the tab and check the cannula. Uh, removing the tab is, I know at least on the dash was kind of um, a little nerve wracking to do because it's, it, it's very uh, an awkward kind of pull. And when you pull it off, it almost feels like you break something inside of it. So we'll see how this one goes. Pretty smooth. The old tabs were blue, these are clear. So as you can see here, there's no cannula sticking out. So that's a good thing. If it was uh, malfunctioned, you'll see a little piece of plastic sticking out there. Um, and so what we'll do is take the adhesive off. Using the tabs and then apply it to the arm. So what I like to do is run my finger right around the adhesive so it's nice and tight. And then I'll even push down on the whole pot itself just to make sure it's not gonna go anywhere for three days. So once you're done there, go ahead and press start. Is the pot securely in place? Yes. And now it's communicating with the pod. So again, you're gonna to wanna to kinda of keep your pod next to your device. That was fast. <laughs> uh, the previous one would also kind of tick tock for a while and then it would insert it. And it, it, it was on the same timing. It was almost like five seconds. This one seemed like it was less than three seconds. Um, but you'll feel it kind of pop into your arm there. It's a little scary at first but you get used to it after a while. Is the cannula properly inserted? You will see a little pink dot um, on the top of the pod there. It says that it's inserted properly. All right, success. So now it's asking if I want to pair my G6 transmitter. So let's go ahead and go through that process. Oh, real quick, I almost forgot. So these things come with the pod pads. Um, I, I opened one up earlier when I did my unboxing uh, in the unboxing video. It's a peel away and inside of the peel away there's another peel away. All right, so you'll peel off the big section first. That's kind of messy. Match it up. I'm doing this without a mirror, so hopefully it works good. Boom. Press that down. And then you'll take off the remaining peel away sections. One and two. All right. It's on. Now to be honest, I, I don't really feel like these are necessary. Like I'm glad they're giving, him, uh, giving us that option. Um, but the first Omnipod, I think I only tore one off once or twice and I had it for almost two years. Uh, thank you, but kind of unnecessary, but thank you. Okay, so now time to connect my G6 uh, CGM. It says connect your CGM Omnipod 5, enter your transmitter serial number. Now, most of you know those serial numbers are on the boxes and on the devices. Unfortunately, they're on the back of the device 
and if the device is already on you, it's hard to find that number unless you find it in your cell phone. What you do is you open up your G6 app and then you go to settings. Under settings, you will find your transmitter and your transmitter number. There's also the serial number, uh, firmware, software number. There's a serial number, a firmware, and a software number. You want the serial number. So go back to your device and enter that number. All right, it is 8SCG7N. Oh, did that one wrong. Okay, double check your numbers. They're correct. C, yep, yep. Save, confirm. So now it says this can take up to 20 minutes. Um, so I'll keep you posted. All right, it worked less than 20 minutes. It must have been about 10 or less. Either way, pretty good. I now have a reading, 132. And since it's 149, uh, that's my after lunch high. Not too bad. I want to thank you for joining me today. Next week, I'm going to give you a seven day review on the Omnipod 5. I want to let you know how it went for me, pros, cons, and uh, whatever else I come across. I'm Ben, I'm Type Me. See you next time.